Okay, looks like it's time to start. Um, good morning, everybody. Glad to have everybody here and welcome. I'm sure we'll get some people coming in little by little, but I'll get started anyway because I really think people are here to hear these, this world-class group of speakers that we have. So I'm gonna go through my presentation. I'm gonna go like pretty rapid fire. So you, like I said yesterday, you can think of it like you're watching TV and your spouse or partner has the clicker. So we've all seen this, so I'll go quickly through this. Um, please mute your phone if you have a chance. And think about questions ahead of time. And also, uh, don't forget there's a poll at the end. And awesome is nice, but I think that's a five. <laughs> and I'm sure that's what it will be. So. Anyway, just as a quick introduction, um, I'm going to talk about the driver's challenges and benefits of the digital transformation, just some of the things that we're seeing. And I'll just tell you about that because I did a little survey. and. I'll show you some of the things that people told me that they're doing. And it was an eye-opener for me. And the survey I did was actually focused on an industry, and it happened to be the pharmaceutical industry. And it was terrific. Um, just the people and some of the things, their challenges and the things that they're talking about. So I'll just mention a few brief points about that, highlights. Then um, we have Derek Schuin's going to talk about from Gold Corp, which is a leading uh, gold mining and silver mining company in the world. And we also have uh, Eugene Tung, which is a leading pharmaceutical company speaking. And we also have Ied, who is a, from Saudi Aramco, which is, of course, the leading oil and gas petroleum company in the world. So we're really, really excited to have this group today. And on the panel, uh, I have a person from Sun Power. And so we have a process and discrete representatives here. So I think it's going to be an awesome session. So uh, we do have some uh, these additional experts. We also have Michael Canellis, who's also from OSI Soft, and I think he'll, he'll, he'll be is terrific. All great panelists and sessions. I don't know how I got this group together, but I feel like I'm so lucky. <laughs> so anyway, I saw the dog presentation with the Ford, and I liked it because I can relate to that. And in fact, if you look at my uh, Twitter page, I have myself dog mushing in Alaska. But which kind of dog are you? Are you the dog that stands out? Are you the dog that's kind of apart from the rest of the group, you know, and there's all different kinds of dogs that we're dealing with. And, and culture is important, so I'm just wanted to mention that. And, um, but so is technology, too. And sometimes one drives the other behavior, or the other drives the other behavior, but it's an intersection, I think. So you need to find that balance. So anyway, um, what I defined as the digital transformation, everybody had a different definition. And what I did for this survey was I just threw it out there. I just said, so what are you doing for the digital transformation? And you wouldn't believe the answers I got. But anyway, I call it the digital transformation is the transformation of business, industrial products, operations, value chains, and services that are enabled through the augmentation of people and knowledge through the expanded use of digital technologies. So it involves culture, people, things, processes. And there's all different kinds of technologies that we've been seeing that people are doing and things like that. And I'll show you the, some of the things that people said to me in the pharmaceutical industry. And robotics are getting bigger too. And there's a big value statement for that. We talked a lot about the value from data yesterday, so some of this we covered. But anyway, and I'm seeing cameras everywhere and there's, there's more of that as well. So there's a lot, all kinds of data challenges, and we covered a lot of this yesterday, especially in the process industry and the discrete industries, more so, I think, than in the business industries, because there's a lot of things to consider around data challenges, and we got into that a little bit yesterday. And also, like, where do you put the data? Do you put it today in the cloud? Do you put it on the edge? Or do you put it on premise? And you do you do that by application? So there's all kinds of things to consider for the digital transformation. And there's analytics. We touched upon the analytics. We had a, a person talk about machine learning and other types of analytics yesterday. And there's all different types. And it depends upon the application and the value. You know, we didn't, uh, not necessarily one's better than the other, but, you know, they are leading to, we're seeing more and more autonomous. People want to go to autonomous operations. And so, um, you, what I say is the importance of data and analytics is to uh, use some of the tools that are out there, make it easier for yourself, and obtain your insights quickly, because that's really important in these industries. 
So there's a lot of data in manufacturing. There's lots of digital devices, data, cloud. We've seen all that. So, and where do you locate? Do you put it in the data lake, which is a lot of people put in all their raw data in one place. Some people put some contextualized and some raw data. And this is just streaming in all kinds of data, whether it's unstructured, structured, semi-structured. Um, and that's really what data lakes are. And so we're seeing more of those, too. In fact, uh, I read that 40% of major organizations are reported, and I believe it's mostly business data, having over 100 terabytes of data in data lakes. So anyway, all different kinds of things, documents, reports, everything's being put in there, even process data. So one of the things that is about the platforms, and we believe, or at least I believe, that it's going to be platforms, different platforms. And I think a couple of people mentioned a large organization, it's going to be very hard to have one platform. And I think there'll be data platforms, and we're going to talk about that in the next session. I think there'll be cloud edge platforms, and there'll be apps in different places. So cultural challenges, we touched upon this, and one of the people I talked to when I did the survey said to me, and I liked it because it, it kind of shows the challenges that you're seeing, is he said, IT is on their own. Manufacturing may have IT experts, but they are manufacturing people. Manufacturing IT people and IT people don't see eye to eye. And I didn't want to put who quoted it. They asked me not to use any names, but, but I bet you some people in here could relate to this. See a few nods, so. Um, and the reality is, is, you know, I guess it's hard to round up the dogs, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so what are some of the differences with the cultural challenges? And one of the things is, I thought, is that the new technology can be both a disruptor for organizations, but it also can be a catalyst for industry change. You know, and I see things like even with the iPad, I shop differently. When I go to the store, I actually look for the aisle numbers and things like that. And now even with the Target app, you can actually, if you wanted to buy like, I was looking at patio furniture and I noticed it had a little thing on it. So I pushed the button and sure enough, you can kind of put it in your house and see how it's gonna look with virtual reality. So that's kind of awesome. So I, I, if they can do that in retail, they can do that in the process. We can use it for things to see where machines are gonna fit or, or moving things around in a process. I think it'll be, I mean, a good use of it in, the, in our industries. But one of the things that I, I did want to point out is it's really about people, processes, technology, and business. But the other thing is, is I've seen people talk about the physical and the virtual, but I also think there's going to be some other aspects to it, like the chemical and the biological part. And I'm just going to allude to that. But culture determines how things get done, but culture, technology can drive culture, I think. So what are you doing for the digital transformation? Well, I asked a bunch of people, and these aren't all the answers, but some of the things that I thought you'd be interested in, they talked about new platforms they're working on. They talked about security. They talked about the advanced analytics and AI and some of the applications that they're doing. They talked about the data management. They talked about visualization. They talked about using robots and chatbots, and there's a lot of value in the robots, they told me, because they can replace one, five people with one person. And it was mostly in the pharmaceutical, it was mostly in the supply chain, but there is some people that are doing some things in the process too, they told me. If it's a repetitive process and they can replace it with a robot, they said they're starting to do that. So, and then they talked about the data lakes and the clouds and those issues and about you know, where you're gonna locate the data, what kind of data do you put where? So other things that were mentioned, um, was the digital twin. I, I thought it was just interesting how people's interpretation of what is the, you know, I just threw it out there, you know, what are you doing for the digital transformation? And I got everything from even batch and continuous. We're going to batches of one, and we're also going from batch to continuous processes in the pharmaceutical industry, which is a, used to be a very, very, everything was done in batches. And so um, some people talked about integrating the supply chain and the design and the recipes and things like that, that they're, putting their formulations into the uh, manufacturing. And so we'll see a lot of this today, hopefully, so I'm not going to go into any more details. But it's really about new processes, new business and challenge, and customer. the customer experience is important, too. And a few people talked about that as well. 
So finally, I started thinking, well, what's the future of the digital transformation? And so, so I heard people talking all about Industry 4.0. What about Industry 5.0? Has anybody thought about that? I'm sure they have. But, so I couldn't find anything. So I said, OK, it's going to be a lot of robots talking to robots and collaborative. It's going to be the biological and the chemical all integrated. And we're going to see a lot more of the autonomous manufacturing. And I've thought about this a lot. And yes, there will be accidents and incidents where the car doesn't stop at the right time. They're going to be terrible and catastrophic. But it's still much better than what we have today because humans are notoriously bad drivers, especially women, right? <laughs> Everybody would agree. So anyway, I think it is leading to autonomous uh, manufacturing. And it, it's going to get easier to program. I think that there's going to be things like you're just going to tell it like on a chat box, hey, connect this to this, connect that to that, and boom, it's done. Or it'll just come up automatically and say, do you want to connect it and send you an alert? There's going to be all kinds of things like that. So we're going to start to see these in the next few years. It's going to be much more collaborative. It's going to be more autonomous. And you're going to see even more data. So that's why I'm putting a plug in for my next session. <laughs> so anyway, the, the thing about the digital transformation is that uh, you need to leverage new standards I think that's important, and we have the OPA meeting and new technologies, and that's what you're going to see today, how people are doing that, what they're really doing. Embrace the digital transformation and, you know, get on the team kind of thing, you know, and, and also embrace the culture as well. Make your culture thing. So if you go to my, I think it's the J. Abel 411, you'll see that I've always had a dog sled at the top, and it was me, me sledding in Alaska, so I really related to the dogs. So, And I think it's important to be... Um, part of the team, and I think that one of the biggest differentials is probably the leader. So it's really important to have a real good leader, uh, and I think that makes a difference. Anyway, well, thank you very much, and.